Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another video. In this opportunity, I'll be talking about what a short-term rental looks like here in Valencia, Spain. I'll briefly go over the cost, the process. Um, I'll give you a tour of one of these apartments. And at the end, I'll go through the pros and cons so that you can determine for yourself whether this would be a good option for you or not. And before we continue with the video, I would like to give a huge shout out to my friends Aya and Oscar for letting us film their apartment. You can check them out right here. Aya has got a ton of content on Instagram uh, about really cool things to do in Valencia and Oscar is an amazing game developer. All right, so first things first, what is a short-term rental? A short-term rental is when the contract duration is between one month and 11 months this would obviously be suitable for individuals coming from abroad who are planning on staying for that period of time. For example, my friends Aya and Oscar, they are digital nomads and uh, they have been living in Spain for about 9-10 months and they are ready to move out into their next destination. Alright, so let's get started with a quick tour of Aya and Oscar's apartment. Their apartment is 65 square meters roughly. It is located in the neighborhood of Rusafa. So excellent location if you want to uh, have an outgoing life and pretty close to the city center. This is what the uh, layout looks like. Let me uh, get settled in here. It's on the fourth floor, I believe, and uh, there's no elevator because it's a pretty um, old building. But as you will see inside, it is, it is renovated and is very beautifully decorated. The first thing that you see when you come in to your left is the open living room. I've mentioned before that the building is old, but the apartment itself is renovated. It's beautifully decorated and it's ready to move in. So you can see the living room area right here. And at the end of the living room, we got ourselves a small balcony. Right next to the balcony, we have the door, which leads us to our first room. It is a small room, the smallest out of the two. My friends Aya and Oscar have converted it to an office. Up next, we have the bathroom, which is next to the small room. It's a very decent sized bathroom. Right up next is the kitchen. It's an entire open area. There's no doors. So the living room is communicated with the kitchen. The kitchen itself is very well lit because there are windows to the interior part of the building, which is often referred to as the communal area of the building. And it's very well lit, like I said, uh, and very spacious. And finally, we have the master bedroom right here. It is also very well illuminated because of the windows on this part towards the inside of the communal area. And it's a, it's a very nice size, and it also has built-in closets. Hey, quick side note. As I was editing this, my friend Aya sent me some additional information, which I think is very important to include for you guys who are expats and digital nomads looking to move to Valencia. Aya told me their frustration started when they contacted a ton of listings from Idealista, which is probably the most popular website to look for apartments here in Spain. When they got in touch with all of those listings, they all told them that 
the minimum contract was for one year when they knew they wanted to be here for around eight months. During that time, they were staying in an Airbnb and it obviously started to become expensive. Luckily, around those days, Aya came across an Instagram story from somebody mentioning the term short-term rental and that's when it clicked for her. She went on and Googled that and came across a company or an agency called Globex. I'm not affiliated to them in any way. When you go into their website, I will link it down in the description. When you go into their website, it is very clear what they do. They provide relocation services, everything property related to expats and digital nomads. You can see the listings on the website, but not the prices because it depends on the duration of the contract. My friend's experience was very positive. They got in touch with the agency on a Tuesday and by Friday of that same week, they were already signing the contract. All they were asked for was their passports. My friends do recommend the agency. They've had a couple of problems in the apartment, which the agency solved very quickly and they never had to get in touch with the landlord themselves. Now on to the rest of the video. The cost of renting this apartment is 1,200 euros per month. It includes the utilities, which is water, electricity, and Wi-Fi. And the overall cost of renting the apartment is one month of rent. So the first month of rent, uh, one month's deposit, and one month of fee for the agency. So my friends, I and Oscar had to put down 3,600 euros in order to move in. All right, now to the pros and cons. This is where you get to decide whether this is an option that fits for you or not. Pros, obviously the main pro is that your contract can be less than 12 months. These apartments are usually ready to move in. The whole process is managed by an agency and it's meant to be quick and convenient and you can do all of the signing and providing all the documents remotely from your home country before you move in. And another great thing is that because this is managed by an agency, any repair, anything that you need will usually be taken care of very quickly. All right, now the cons. First thing that comes to mind is the price. Short-term rentals are more expensive than uh, renting a normal apartment. Another con is that there might be less options to choose from. Out of the overall rental market out there, only a small percentage is gonna be uh, short-term rentals. Okay, one last con is usually short-term rentals have the rent with all bills included. This um, is very convenient, but it also gives you less flexibility in terms of what energy provider or internet provider you choose. And also, if you go above a certain threshold of consumption, the agency can charge you more. But that's why it's really good to speak to the agency and have those terms very clear in the contract. Okay, now for some final thoughts. Is a short-term rental in Valencia a good option for you or not? Well, for me, I think it depends. If I knew I was going to be living in Valencia for the next six to nine months, and I wanted a place that I could call home for that period of time, and I was going to be working, I would want to be very comfortable. So yes, I would be okay with paying that expensive agency fee uh, to have a place that I could call my own for that time. On the other hand, if I knew I was going to be living in Valencia for two to three months, I might be okay with being a little bit uncomfortable and maybe rent a room from a private individual so that I don't have to go through the whole agency thing, uh, saving money in the process. I might negotiate the terms of the payments with the private owner, maybe pay half of it up front as a guarantee. It all depends. Let me know in the comments, are you planning on moving to Valencia long term, short term? Please check out uh, some of my other videos about Valencia. And if you found some value from this video, please give it a thumbs up and see you in the next one.